Reggie here, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder and comic book collector. And I want to welcome you to another one of my live streams. It gives me great pleasure to welcome John from CoverPrice.com here to the live stream. John, it is good to see you. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So, John, I actually tried to give a little bit of an introduction to you the other day during my show on Sunday. I'm honestly not sure that I did you justice at all. Can you tell the people <laughs> a little bit about who you are? Yeah, no, of course. So uh, my name is John. I am the one of the co-founders of CoverPrice.com, a collection management and price guide for comic books. Uh, before that, my my real life is uh, my secret identity, I guess, better, would be um, background psychology. Um, went to grad school and did something called human factors which is all about like design and mixing technology and psychology built websites for the last 12 years worked for agencies did all that kind of stuff and uh then always loved comics my co-founder uh, matt and i just have been into it for forever and so from there we just uh decided why not try to do this thing and put together a team and been working on this for you know forever did you, did you just say your secret identity in your real life yes, I did. what would you just say <laughs> Who doesn't, right? We all have our secret identities. So well done. Hence the comic book collector and bodybuilder intro that I just gave for myself, right? Yeah, totally. So no, thank you for the introduction. I think that that's really cool. We're actually going to spend some time digging into a lot more of of your background, what you do, uh, and the website, et cetera, et cetera, in just a couple of moments. But I want to say hello to a couple of people that have joined the chat. Perry Comics is here. Chris Barrett is here. Terry is here. Bake the Snake is in the house. It's good to see you. Mac Daddy Austin is in the house. Sith Lord. Randy is here. Tina Cranston. How you doing, my friend? And my good buddy, Comics with Bueller. Travis is here. It is good to see you, my friend. I am glad that all of you guys can actually jump on this live stream. This is our second live stream of the week, and, and I've been excited about both of these live streams for quite some time. I am definitely pleased to have John here on the channel. And I want to give a huge shout out to the subscriber that actually recommended that I reach out to John and have a conversation with him. And, and I really appreciate John taking time out of his schedule to actually jump onto the live stream to talk a little bit more about his website, the features, the functionality, and how it can actually help all of us as collectors. So I am hopeful that this live stream will be as informative as some of the other live streams that we've done in the past. And as a reminder, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I definitely want to encourage you to do that so that you can stay abreast of all the content that we release on a weekly basis. So John, can you can you tell us uh, a little bit more about Cover Price? I heard you mention during your, your brief intro that uh, Cover Price was actually a pricing guy and a collection management system rolled into one. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, no, of course. Um, so basically, uh, Cover price, what we do is we go ahead and aggregate a lot of sales data. I mean, we're talking thousands and thousands of uh, data points every day. Uh, and we aggregate it together. We separate it so that people can see the prices for both graded and raw comics. And then we apply it to your collection. So basically, it's kind of like a smart collection. So if you have something, um, say you have 10,000 books in your collection, uh, we will track that for you. And you can go to uh, coverprice.com, uh, C O V R price.com we took out the super cool and super modern and all that fun stuff launch cover price that's like 15 that, that you are <laughs> um anyway and um from there what you can do is uh we'll tell you what what's going on in your collection based on actual sales data so it's it's kind of combining both worlds instead of uh keeping your collection in the closet and not knowing what's in there we let you know and uh just connects it to live data and I think what's great about it is that you do both raw and graded comics because I, I think that's one of the struggles for a lot of people is that I have a lot of slabs. Yes. But the vast majority of my collection, which is sitting off to my left here, is actually steel in its raw format. So I think it's great that you guys provide data for both the, the raw books and also the slab books as well. Thank you. Yeah. One thing that we noticed when we were doing our research before we launched the website was like 90% of most people's collections are raw books. Uh, the reason, of course, is you're only gonna grade them if they're sentimental or if you're gonna try to upsell them into you know, something else and you wanna justify that grade. And there's always a, a bump, right, when it's graded. Um, one other thing to kind of call out is all the trends on our websites based on raw data, uh, the raw comics, not the actual uh, graded ones. 
So uh, we think it's a little bit more indicative of what the marketplace is really doing and what it's all about. Okay. And hopefully we'll get a little bit more into that. Um, I think you said the the statistic was that 90% of people's collections was still raw. Is that what I heard? Yeah. Yeah, unless your unless your name is Travis or Comics with Bueller, a hundred percent of the collection <laughs> is actually uh, still in the raw format. And Mac Daddy, that X Men one back there is a five point oh. And I am temporarily growing a beard because I'm too lazy to shave, and I will shave soon enough. So that answers like eight questions right there. So I think it looks good, man. I'm just kind of. You know. Brother, we are twins. Brothers, I know, from right? Mother, mother. We have all heads and beards. It is a good look for us right now. I think you got bigger muscles than me, though. That's <laughs> so let let's do this. I, you know, I, I think sometimes with certain things that are being discussed, I think that it is sometimes easier for people to actually see things, and through seeing them, they actually improve their understanding versus just verbally talking about some things. So I want to ask you if you could take a couple of moments to pop over to coverprice.com and actually walk us through some of the high level features and functionality of the website, because there's probably people in this chat that haven't seen the site yet. So can we take a little bit of time to do that? Yeah, of course. Let me know if uh, it starts slowing down or anything and we will, you know, I'll, I'll jump off of that. But yeah, let me do that real quick here. All right. So you should be seeing the site right about now. Yep. Okay, cool. Uh, so this is uh, coverprice.com. This is our baby. So basically at a kind of a high level, cover price allows you to search for any common. It's a price guide. So if you wanted to find something, you could just type it in uh, and go directly to that page. Uh, we also actually start aggregating um, sales data. So we have our hot comics, our key comics, rare and, and top variants. We do a weekly top 10 that you can, if you follow us on any of our social media on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, um, we do a weekly top 10 based on actual sales data from that last week. So these are the ones that kind of pull from the top. And we do top movers, top shakers. So you can go in and see which comic books daily have sold for the most, for example, or the ones that have over the week has had the uh, most units sold. And on Wednesdays, when new comic books come out, you could, of course, go out there and check out uh, all the new releases, add them to your wish list, and then walk into your local comic shop or whatever and uh, buy all your comics. So that's kind of like our homepage. But just to call out a couple of fun things, the whole point of the site is going into it and actually kind of living with this live data of the website. So for we, for example, hot comics, you can go in, you can see what's the uh, which one today has the highest value, which one has the current uh, top trends, uh, oldest, newest, and all that kind of stuff. Whoops, I just hit A to Z accidentally. <laughs> anyway, and so you can go in, and from there, of course, you could go in and click on any of the comics you're interested in, uh, go to the detail page, add it to your collection, add it to your wish list, or buy it from some of our affiliate uh, websites. Uh, and here you start seeing a, a summary of the sales data, both for graded and for raw. You see any variants that we have in the system, and a lot of times our members will always come back to us and um, you know let us know if we're missing anything, so we could add those pretty quick. And just to check, can you still hear me? <laughs> I didn't just go blank, did I? No, I can absolutely hear you, and I just put myself on mute so as to not pull the screen away from you, so that people can actually see what you're talking about. But you're doing a fantastic job. Oh well, thank you. Now you're just being nice. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate it. I'll take it. Um, we give you some summary information about the comics. And of course, if it's if the comic has anything special about it, like it's a hot comic or one of the key comics, like this is the first appearance of Killer Croc, we'll call that out. And we do that if it's in your collection as well. Um, for this particular comic, we have 119 sales, 55%. We'll tell you the latest, highest one, highest sale. And of course, then we have our price guide tables. We have our graded and raw. Um, and from here, you can go in and actually dive into the data. So for example, if you wanted to see something, uh, what's going on with the raw comics, you could literally dive in and say, okay, for February, here's some of the stuff that is actually sold. Um, one other thing, uh, I don't want the whole thing to be a, a walkthrough, but one other thing is if you have your collection in cover price, um, we will tell you, and don't you laugh at the number of items in my collection. I am bad and haven't put my entire collection in, but my co-founder laughs at me all the time about this because this is insane. Um, but we'll tell you what the highest comic in your uh, collection is worth, what your total collect uh, collection estimated value is, hot comics, key comics, rare finds, and you can then go into each of your, your comics. But the coolest thing that we added just a few months ago is this um, view collection. It's kind of my stats. Imagine every single thing in your collection at your fingertip. 
And here you can actually see, you know, you can filter the whole thing by uh, top estimated value, current trend. I'm, I'm embarrassed again, because I see the stuff that you have on your wall. <laughs> and so this is not like kind of looking into my collection. But uh, <laughs> they call know, that the wall of truth, brother. And it is, it is it is a good wall, but it is not as good as some other people. Let's put it that way. Well, you know, in in before this call, I should have went in and faked it and put in a ton of good shit in my uh, in my collection <laughs> just to brag. But but anyway, so and that's no, this is just this is not an actual action one, number one. Anyway, the whole point is we tell you if it's key, we tell you if it's hot. We um, you can put in multiple copies of it, um, and of course, if you dive into one of them, you could actually put in specific notes. Um, we're creating like a profit loss kind of thing, so you can actually track your sales. Um, you can rate, you know, if you like, you know, different things you like about it. And of course you can put in like what location and stuff. So in a nutshell, that's kind of the main features of cover price. We do a lot more with content and stuff like that, but in terms of the, the data and all that, that's pretty much what it is. That is super helpful. Thank you for uh, taking the time to actually walk us through that. Um, I have I haven't honestly spent as much time on the site as I've wanted to. I did sign up for the free membership, uh, which I think think gives me access to 14 days of the full functionality of the site. Is that correct? That's absolutely right. So you can try it for free, uh, 14 days. And after that, it'll ask you if you want to have a basic membership, which is the free membership or a paid version that gives you unlimited access to like the price guide and everything like that. So what is the main difference between the free membership and the paid membership? I think you just touched on it, but I want to be very clear about the difference between the two. Yeah. Great question. So the free membership is so when you do your free trial, you get unlimited. So unlimited is all about, you know, you can look up as many comics as you want. You can add unlimited amount to your collection. You get access to all the content, all the trends, um, basically everything. The free version lets you look up five comic books a day. So you can look at the price guide. So there's a limitation there. Uh, it also has a cap of a, a certain amount of comics that you could add to your collection and then limitations on some of the, um, the trend data. But if you're going to a comic shop and stuff like that, we wanted it to be accessible. We want people to be able to use it and enjoy it. Um, so you could go to a comic shop and look up any kind of comics you find right there uh, without having to pay for the site. You know, But th there is a cutoff because we still need money to do de more development and we want to make the site as amazing as possible. So, yep. And, and how, how much is the paid membership? So right now the payment membership is $8.95 a month. But if you do the annual membership, you get that for $6.95 a month. Um, as we speak, behind the scenes, you're getting some of the uh, uh, upfront kind of uh, politics of uh, cover price. Right now, as we speak, we're actually building a, another tier for $3.95 a month. And that's going to let you look at unlimited amount of price guide. So it has a limitation of what you can put into your collection, like maybe 100 books uh, into the collection, but you can look up as many books as you want. We, yeah. um, we recently did a survey with about three to 400 of our users. And that's what they wanted. They were like, you know, the free version's great, but we want more access. So we're just making it a little bit more affordable uh, and giving that kind of uh, freedom. So what's crazy is I, I literally did a video earlier today and it was an open letter to Marvel making some recommendations to them. And one of the things that I recommended as a marketer was market research. I was basically saying, hey, take the time to talk to your customers because your customers will tell you what their wants, needs and desires are. And so it's it's it. it makes me feel good, right? That you're basically saying, we talk to our members and we're making changes based upon feedback from our membership. That goes a long way to, I think, telling you what you need to do, but also building some loyalty uh, with your customers because you're listening to them and making changes as a result. Honestly, it's that's the psychology right there. And, um, you know, even on websites, digital experiences, humans are involved and you know for us to understand what our users want to ask them and let them tell us um that's the most important thing because we really want it to be a community where everyone feels welcome and everyone enjoys it you know <laughs> sorry i'm laughing because my buddy <laughs> closet geek just gave us a super chat for 4.99 because of the beard that i'm growing out brother my <laughs> wife is gonna make me cut this so i'm glad that i made the cutoff for that super chat <laughs> but uh no I, I think i think um john you raised some some excellent points there because i heard i saw several people including tina kind of make comments about the way that the site looked and functioned and, and and it doesn't look like an accident it looks very purposeful in terms of how it's laid out there was clearly some thought and some design that went into it versus oh let's add this feature and let's just plug it there because there's an empty spot can you talk a little bit more about maybe how you guys engineered the website 
That is the nicest question I've ever heard because, and the nicest compliment because we really care about the, uh, the UI of the site. Um, like I was saying in the beginning, my, for the last 12 years, I've been a user experience designer and a strategist. Um, I've been building websites for businesses for, for a very long time. And uh, for me, the whole idea of user experience is not only having a usable site, but a site that you like, love using and are inspired to use. Um, you look at any product, you know, it's funny, what, what happens is um, there's the um, aesthetic usability effect, they call it, where if a site looks good, people will give it more freedom to, to have problems. So like an Apple product, for example, um, not to piss any Android people off at all, but the, the thing is that uh, an Android product, uh, an Apple product, when you get lost, you're exploring, you know, because it's so enjoyable. <laughs> and that's, that's what happens. And so for us, the aesthetics of the website, <laughs> I was gonna say, right? <laughs> As I sit here on my, my Mac Pro here. Um, yeah, no, all of us um, enjoy uh, the experience of a site. And the coolest thing about comic books is each one is a piece of art. And for me, as a collector, you know, my whole life, man, like when I, when I saw your, your thing behind you, I was just like, I want to see the images. I want to see the comics. And I love it. And each one has a story and a memory. And so part of our design process for cover price was really to give that as much of a, um, a showcase as possible so that um, people really were proud of their collection. So that's one thing we did. We wanted to have big images. We saw a lot of um, other sites out there that had like little tiny thumbnails and the first thing you want to do, especially when you're looking at variants, is to see the details to make sure you're getting the right one. Yeah. So to, to, to us, that was very important. And I appreciate the, the comment uh, because we did that survey and that was one thing we, we rated really highly on was that people were like, wow, it, it looks good. We like using it. So yep. I think that's a, a great thing. So uh, there was someone that kind of asked the question. I think it was, um, I think it may have been Roger. I can't remember some, no, actually Chris Barrett mm -hmm. or somebody was asking whether it was an app. Um, Swag or not is asking whether it's an app or if it's just the website that is optimized for the phone. Great question. So it is not an app. It's a website. It's a .com. The reason we chose responsive web was we wanted to let people have their collection everywhere. Um, you know, have like access to it on their phone, access to it on a tablet, onto to a computer. And as a startup, we're looking at ways to make sure that that people have that coverage, no matter what device. As we continue to grow and we have more subscribers, the first thing we're going to do is build an app so that you have offline access to a lot of your collection and price guide because that's super important when you're at. There's nothing worse than going to a convention and not being able to get to your your uh, your your price guide or your collection. So we're looking at ways to make sure that that is as accessible as possible. So short answer is, you know, uh, it's not an app right now, but in the future, that's exactly where we're going to be going. Very good. And so we we've uh, we went down a little bit of a, a path there just because of, that's where the conversation went. I think it was a very good discussion, but I want to guide us back to um, focusing more on some of the other features and functionality around the price guide. So one of the things that I wanted to ask you about was the size of the pricing database, right? One of one of the things is if if I plug in my book into um, the collection management system, um, I want to get a price. I want to get an FMV. I want to get some sales data. How big is the current database for cover price? So right now we have over 650,000 individual issues. Um, that's been something that we've been amassing for about two to three years before we even launched. Um, we realized the same thing. Our, our vision is that everything in your collection uh, should be represented on cover price. Right now, we're not focusing on trade paperbacks or hardcovers or manga at this point. It's mostly single issue because those have the most value, but eventually we're going to extend to that so it kind of covers everything. Um, but yeah, we were, it's pretty respectable. It's uh, 650,000. And we're adding about 1,000, 800 to 1,000 each month with the new releases that come out. So it's constantly, like moving forward, it's constantly accurate. There may be some holes when it comes to independent uh, is uh, issues and stuff like that, but we have a feature on the site where people can recommend, like, hey, you're missing something. Uh, and we are adding those things added as soon as possible. Okay. I think we had a little bit of a, a break up there, but I think you said you were, the people could actually make recommendations for things that are missing. And then you guys try to add them as soon as possible. I think that that's what I heard. Yep. Yep. Okay. And um, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, I was going to answer some of these questions I see popping up. Yeah, there. go for it. Um, yeah, that's cool. Um, so our first question, was it an app? So no, it's not an app. It's the website. Um, is it possible for me to just look at the uh, trend tracker? So you'd be surprised. Check out the free version, um, and then even if you want, go with the basic version and see if that meets your needs. We, we do give a lot, actually, even in the free version. And the mid middle tier that we're going to be cooking up right now um, will give you access as well. So you will get a lot more access. 
And then one of the big questions is how often is the website updated? And then specifically, how quickly is it updated after new comics are released on Wednesday? Perfect. Um, okay, so the best way to answer that is reality and then future. <laughs> in reality, it's updated every single day. Um, and in some cases, we're actually updating comics as they pop up and you know stuff like that. In the future, and it's kind of happening now, um, the system automatically does the, the daily thing. It'll sweep through the entire collection. We actually look at what people have in their collection and then add that to our ways of looking it up because there's millions of comics out there. So we're constantly looking at progressive ways to make sure that our prices are as accurate as possible and as relevant as possible. But in the future, what we're looking to do is um, new releases because those tend to have a lot of action and buzz around it. Um, we want to uh, do that hourly and also any of the hot comics, anything on our hot list, we want to update hourly as well. We're also moving to, we kind of, not to, not to put money just on comics because comics for us is about the lore and just, we just love comics. But we want to tr also treat it almost like a stock market. Like this comic that you've been tracking is going up and down. And eventually we want to get that stock ticker almost to the like a live feed of what's happening based on trends. Um, I think we're going to get into this more, but the the act of actually aggregating price data points across all the different marketplaces where we're pulling and stuff is tremendous and very, very hard to do accurately. And for us, we the last thing we want to do is lead somebody down the wrong kind of path and say, hey, your comic's worth this much. You go to sell it or you buy one. And then it turns out that something was inaccurate. So for us, accuracy is very important. And we would side on not getting all the data out there to make sure we have the right data in there, right? Yep. Yep. That's kind of I what think, we're trying to move for. I think that's a great strategy. And I think that was a really robust answer that, that you just mentioned there. So hopefully that addresses some of the questions. Uh, in, in our previous conversations, you had mentioned uh, that cover price shows actual price data. And I think that you mentioned that when you did the walkthrough as well for each of the comic versus a, a guesstimation is what I wrote down generated by some type of algorithm. Can you talk a little bit more about that and, and to maybe um, draw distinctions between cover price and how some of the other pricing services operate? Of course. Um, so for us, a comic or any kind of collectible is only worth as much as someone's willing to pay for it or has, has paid for it. Um, back in the day, you know, as we were doing research, we were talking from people um, at conventions about how the old kind of price guides were working. And, and a lot of times it, it was just people getting together and putting out their expert opinion about this, this comic's really hot and it's going to be worth this much. But the moment someone says something, the moment it leaves, leaves their lips, it's, it's old information. You know, we live in the information age. Why not pull the data? Why not actually have this completely live? Um, so yeah, for us, it was really important to make sure that it was actually as live as possible. And um, also to pull data of sales that have actually happened. So every single sale you see on cover price is from a sold comic, either raw or graded. Uh, there's no speculation. We, we don't want to be in the speculation game. We want to be the information game. We want to be the people who, there's so many speculation sites out there. There's so many different I ideas of what's going on. And trust me, I go down the rabbit holes and love reading every single one of them, <laughs> probably more than I should. And my, my uh, co-founder, Matt, is, is insane about it. He's actually also a contributor and, and an influencer in that sense. He writes a lot of articles for, for a lot of the stuff. Um, so for us, yeah, we, um, we just want to be as accurate as possible and we want to make sure that uh, yeah, everything's correct. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I can tell you, I actually have a video coming out about speculation very soon. So that that's mm. a whole nother, whole nother ball of wax. We are not going to talk about that. But I, I really do like your idea of almost being a stock ticker for at least some books because there is a lot of movement sometimes with within um, the day, sometimes with with specific comics. And and I've actually spoken about this in previous videos that it's it's very difficult to know what's happening with a comic because you're always looking in hindsight. You're always looking at data that has already come out, right? Versus being able to see almost in real time, like with a stock, what's happening right now, moment to moment. Because what you're seeing is possibly days later, depending upon how quickly a website is update, updated versus moments after the completion of a sale. No, 100%. Um, we try to update as soon as possible. Uh, we do it daily. Um, we pull from the different sites that we're, we're aggregating from and, um, you know, the other, the other thing I think to consider, I mean, we, we group the people who use cover price and I think the comic book era, uh, or audience into three different buckets. One is the speculator, then you have the collector, and then you have the reader. 
uh, the readers, the person who just loves comics, they saw, you know, they're gonna watch Captain Marvel when it comes out and get interested in that character. I just saw your video uh, on Captain Marvel. That's why it's fresh in my mind. Don't bring, don't bring that one up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> But they're going to go see it and they're going to become a reader. Now, they might enter into the comic book collecting space by reading digital comics or watching YouTube videos. That's someone that could come to cover price and just learn a little bit. But the collector, this is the guy or girl who has you know, a ton of stuff in their collection, but they, they've never sold a comic in their life. And then you have the speculator. And the speculator like you, for example, wants to know that second data, that, that data by the second live information um, because it's all about being able to understand when to sell or buy a comic book. And that's that stock, stock market thing. Um, I think speculators are a very unique part of the comic community because all of these sites are about, you know, we're talking about speculation, but it's not as big. I mean, the collector market is, is, is a lot bigger, right? I think. Um, so it's constantly a decision for us. I mean, we're all speculators. My co-founder is a huge speculator. Um, so we built the site to make his life easier and it turned out to help a lot of the other speculators. So, uh, yeah. So for us, we're trying to design it for, for people like you. Very good. So you 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 touched on a lot in that comment, and 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 over the course of the last couple of minutes, you've touched on aggregation of data from your data sources. And so um, one of the things I want to ask you about is where does the sales data come from? Because I think you mentioned you guys are pulling in lots of data transactions. Where where is the data coming from? Are we talking about eBay sales, my comic shop, heritage auctions, comic link? Are we talking private dealers? Like where is the data coming from? That's a great question. Uh, and it's the it's the worst question too, because it's the one I can't <laughs> answer directly, unfortunately. Um, so when we were when we were building this, um, okay, I'll say at the at the high level, we pull from four different marketplaces. There are major marketplaces that if you're a speculator or a collector, you've heard of and you use probably daily, if not weekly. Um, but to mention them by the name is the is, trust me, it's the bane of my existence because I get this question all the time and it adds validity to the website to be able to answer this. Um, but when you look at their terms and conditions, each of these different websites have very strict legal policy about actually aggregating data and showing it again alongside somebody else's data. Mm. My, my idea is that you know they don't want to sh like show which marketplace is selling it for cheaper and lose people. Um, so because of that, and because we're a startup, we we shy away from actually answering directly that question. Um, just for the legal aspect of it. Yep. I hope to get to a point very soon where we can just be like filter by this account and you can you can see it all. Um, and we're trying to build in ways uh, legally to allow us to do that. But but let's let, let's be clear. It's not Reggie writing down a price and saying, John, this is how much you should sell this book for. We're, oh, no. we're talking about reputable data sources where transactions are taking place for these comics, yes? Yes, 100%. Each marketplace has been in business for the one that we're pulling from over 10 years and um, has hundreds of thousands of comics for sale. They, yep. they are the barometer of, of all marketplaces. And the key thing to, to call out though is we don't pull from just one of them because we've noticed that each one has this kind of a speciality. Like one might focus more on modern, the others are great at kind of golden era. Um, we want everything in your collection to have some sort of price to it. And we're working hard to make that happen. And because of that, we're any marketplace we pull into the bucket, so to speak, will be um, reputable and allow us to add more uh, volume to our sales. Very good. And I, and I think, you know, there is, and it, there's something to be said about transparency, right? But there's also something to be said for uh, adhering to contractual obligations. So I yeah. think it wasn't a perfect answer, but I think it was a good answer that I think people can appreciate. And, and, and again, I think it's just, it, it's not, um, you know, me selling comics out of my trunk and then sliding yeah. <laughs> the numbers across the table. We're talking about reputable sites that you're actually providing or obtaining data from. So one, one of the other questions that I have is anytime you are aggregating data and it doesn't matter what kind of data you're talking about, there are errors and it, it, they may not even be errors on your part, but they could be errors just with the data, with moving data around, with scrubbing data. How do you guys identify errors how are errors corrected and how quickly are does all that happen? Because the last thing you want is for me to uh, sell a book for a buck when it's worth a thousand. Gross example, but how do you guys monitor for errors in data? Yeah, that's the worst case scenario right there. And that's what um, we're really cognizant to kind of avoid because uh, that would ruin your day, basically, right? And our day. <laughs> I would send you the nastiest yeah. email. <laughs> you know, thankfully, we haven't gotten any nasty emails about that. So uh, I think we're doing a good job. Um, 
So for us to be accurate is really, really important. And the way we do it is through a number of different safeguards. One is the data that we pull in, say you have 100% of something, the data that we pull in is probably less than 100 because we want to make sure we know where we're bucketing the information. Um, I'll, I'll give you an example of one time we did have an error that was systemic throughout the system that we corrected. Um, we started noticing uh, the trends on some of the comics were like a thousand, two thousand percent, and we're like, "Holy shit! Maybe there's something in my collection going up." Yeah. And we looked at it. It turns out we were picking up the original artwork or the page Ooh. that was the sketch. And as you can imagine, a book that's going for fifteen bucks might have an art piece that's going for a hundred or a thousand, and of course, it's going to throw off the uh, the trends. Um, so we identified that and then we were able to put in some filters that actually filtered all those out to the best of our ability at this point. Yep. Um, so that's an example of us being active and responsive to see, looking at the, 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 the website every day, looking at the data every day and the team kind of coming together and going, whoa, why is this happening and fixing it? Yep. Um, so one safeguard is us always on the website. Second safeguard is we actually built tools on the back end that allow us to quickly identify whenever we see these thousand percent trends or something like that happening. Um, and of course, number three is we have a great membership. Everyone in there is emailing. We have uh, info at coverprice.com. Um, I'm John at coverprice.com. Uh, so feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. But um, yeah, we're constantly reaching out and we're correcting it. We're bringing on more and more team members as well. Um, we have a lot of, I mean, I love this community. I love comic books. And I, I mean, everyone you speak to is the most friendliest and amazing person and they want to help because yep. they, this is their passion. Yep. You're, you're probably, I mean, look at all the wonderful people already like commenting and having, you know, wanting to join the conversation. It's, yep. it's such a great community. Um, and so people will reach out all the time and we're finding ways to actually bring those people in as team members to actively kind of clean the site as well. We know we're not perfect. No, no price guide is, but we're working every single day to be better. Um, and I think eventually, and to be honest, I think we're, really, really good where we are, but we're never going to stop until, you know, that, that worst case scenario, we'd never want that to happen. So we're not going to stop until we're, we feel really good. Your last couple of sentences were like spot on. No one's perfect, but you're striving to be better through the help of other individuals that are willing to freely give their time, energy, and, and input to make things better. Um, great, great sentiment there. So you guys are pulling in all kinds of sales data from your four different uh, sources, uh, not yet disclosed, hopefully at some point. Um, but all of this raw sales data comes in. And I believe you've said that all of this individual sales data is available. So individual transactions can be viewed by people on the site. Is that is that accurate? Yes, you could actually drill all the way down. So uh, another reason, um, the way we designed it to make it usable and kind of friendly is we surface information at, at layers. Uh, if you're a collector who just wants to know that summary, you, it's at the top of the page. If you want to dive a little more, you go down into the price guide and see the per condition grade or the, the raw. But if you want to go deeper, there's a bunch of links there that lets you see by month and by grade um, what all the sales data we have. And then you can come up with your own conclusion. We want to empower everybody. And then the summary that you just mentioned, is that just the, the straight FMV? Is that what the summary high level is? That's a great question. Um, so one thing that we were really cognizant of is a comic book's only worth what it's worth right now. And that can fluctuate, right? So yep. the last thing we want to do is say we have 100 sales for a comic um, that span maybe three months. The last thing we want to do is take an average of all three months and say, this is what that FMV is, right? The fair market value. Instead, we look at the most recent sales values. We actually look at the last maybe four known sales events um, in terms of days take the average and then average that so that we could actually identify what that trend is based on recent sales data. So again, like we're going to do somebody a huge disservice if we say that book is worth uh, $2 when it had a $100 sale, $300 sale in the last four days, because it's it's trending. And that's what we're trying to capture. So we, we've we built our, our algorithms to actually capture the, to be, to be a time and make sure that it's actually relevant. So So the FMV that someone would see would essentially be the most recent current sales for that particular book as as near time real time as it can possibly be is that fair that's fair yeah okay that that's super helpful because i think to your point you could have a couple of sales and you could have some ups and downs in that price right you could have you know 100 bucks 150 and 100 
you know, 25 or something like that. And it's helpful if you're kind of sort of normalizing that and smoothing it out just a little bit. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll look at the last three or four sales for something and do a quick average of that. And that becomes like my sales price. That's my way of kind of smoothing it out. But it, mm. but, but it sounds like you guys are doing it a little bit more scientifically than uh, <laughs> my, my poor math skills will allow. <laughs> Trust me. I, I had a, a PhD buddy who uh, is a the smartest guy I've ever met, like he'd go in school with teachers and he became a big data guy. And so mm. when we started doing the stats on the site, I just was like, Russell, <laughs> help. <laughs> and uh, he came over and just like uh, put us on the right path. So. Brother, I am an MBA, but uh, you start talking big data and I'm like, yeah, boom, 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 boom. I, um, I like it. I I just wade into my knees and I stopped there, man. <laughs> yep, yep, very good, very good. I think that yeah. again, all of this stuff is, is, is super helpful to people. So another question that I have is, we talked a little bit about your data sources. We talked about your data. We talked about your FMV. We talked about how you guys normalize things, how you look for errors, how you correct errors. Um, what when when we're talking about slabs, right? There are there are several different companies out there that do grading of comics. Which grading companies data are you pulling in? Are you pulling in uh, CGC, CBCS, PGX, Halo? Like, what are you guys pulling in, and what data are you then reporting out for people to see? Awesome question. Uh, let me just answer one thing that came up was uh, someone was saying, "I'm not sure." Uh, this is Rag uh, Rag Seven One Eight. Not sure about that. Getting comps for uh, just a couple is too few. Uh, totally agree. It depends on the amount of sales the comic has. So it's not a comparison of one against another. It would be almost like the average of each day, the entire sales event of a, a day. So if that day has uh, 12 comics, it's the average of that, and then the next event, next event, next event. We are really, we really want to improve the sample size of each of our data for averages, of course. Um, but some comics only have like two sales, so it's like you know you're kind of we're, we're stuck with the data that we have but whenever possible we always try to include and our algorithms are built to include as much data as possible uh to your question about the grading uh which grading and, and just one quick group. comment uh yeah. that's how you're doing the fmv but but people also have access to the raw data themselves if they want to run their own calculations and and see and go a little bit deeper so oh, just totally. i want to throw totally. that out there yeah and and i should say i mean i should say this at the beginning but Every price guide is an estimate. You know, we, as much as I want to have uh, the, uh, which infinity stone would that be? Uh, <laughs> Don't even <get> <laughs> Mind, the mind stone or something. Uh, <laughs> I know every single sale that happened out there, um, you know, we, we, we have to use it as best we can. So cover price, the way I see it, honestly, is like, this will keep you informed of what's happening in your collection so you don't have to spend hours going through each and every single one looking up every single one when you find something that you want look at our data and then make sure you're, you you know do your research to before you sell it to make sure it's the, the best data for you if you feel if you don't feel comfortable with it yep. you know it's always on you know buyer beware i guess is the way to say it um but you know we're doing everything we can to make it as accurate as possible so to answer your question <laughs> To jump back, um, we do all the all the graded sales are a collection of uh, CGC, CBC, uh, CBCS, and PGX. Um, those are the three that we're pulling in, and we don't distinguish between them. And I know, I know, I know. There's so much controversy about who uh, who's a softer grader, who's a harder grader, who you know is more valid. Um, we're not here to play favorites. Um, in the future, we may draw out that information so people can make that in that guesstimation for themselves. Um, but at this point, we put everything together and say, this is what the industry is saying is a graded value at this price. And so it gets bucketed in that same information. So yeah. we are, you know, we have heard that people want that information. So we are looking at ways to surface that at our detail level. Yeah, because what would be helpful would maybe be to filter out or in um, a different company, right? Because mm -hmm. there are sometimes some differences between them. So adding that ability to do a filter, I think could be de could definitely help. But just to be clear on that answer, you are pulling in CGC, CBCS, and also PGX pricing for, for all uh, graded comics. Yes? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And a uh, huge shout out to uh, Tatina for the super chat and my buddy Thierry. Brother, thank you very much. The beard, it lives on at least 
for another day. So thank you guys for that super chat. I definitely appreciate that. Um, you, you know, I think I think with the beard conversation, I think we should keep that going and uh, see how long you could do it. I mean, <laughs> if everyone can vote, let's see here. <laughs> Brother, <laughs> I, I will get no kisses from the wife if this beard gets any thicker, let me tell you. <laughs> She's like, it's so spiky. It just spikes my face. So it, 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 it won't last, last long. long. Yeah, once it gets longer, it's not a problem. Yeah, so we, we've spoken, on my channel, we've spoken a lot about variants <laughs> and we, we've spoken a lot about it in my open letter to Marvel today. I actually was like, no more variants, like no more mutants, no more variants, or at least cut back the variants significantly. Right. Uh, and we've, we've spoken on the channel about both the good and the bad of variants because they, there is some, there are some wonderful variants out there. Don't get me wrong. I just think that there's too many of them. And, and I'm curious for you as a, a pricing service, uh, how difficult or easy is it for you guys to stay current on all the variants that are coming out? And I'm talking uh, Marvel or DC variants that are issued by publishers. I'm talking about exclusive store variants. I'm talking about incentive yeah. variants. Like how big of a challenge or not are variants for you guys? I'd say they're probably the biggest challenge for us and anyone trying to price comic books across industries um, or, and different marketplaces. Um, it's so funny. I mean, variants, you either love them or hate them kind of mentality, right? Because they have played wackiness with the industry for, for a very long time. Um, we have an article coming out. It's like a 30 page article on every single variant known to man from Whitman to incentive to whatever. And we're, we're going to be probably launching that next month on a part of the site for more content. Um, but to your point, tracking variants and knowing variants. So the website right now, we think of it as like a parent-child relationship with the standard issue being the parent and every every variant underneath that being a child. Okay. Now it gets, I don't know, I want to curse, but I, I curse normally, so. Um, funky. It, it gets funky crazy um, when, you know, <laughs> so you have your retailer incentives and those are pretty much, we, can, we have those at 100% um, in terms of in the system and the database. Uh, when it comes to in sailor, uh, um, retailer incentive variants, the ones that the retailer has to opt into uh, and purchase a certain amount to receive, um, those are a little bit more spotty. And I think um, any independent ones have to be told to us to get into the system. Um, our membership base is very adamant about that. And so we always add, as if you have a variant that you need, whether it's that one weird whatever, we'll put it in there. And if there's a price to it, we'll find it and start giving you a price. Um, but it's very, very hard. And the reason variants are hard, um, I mean, man, we're looking at like image recognition kind of software to actually track it more effectively, barcode scanners, um, everything. But the hardest part is a lot of the data that's coming into any kind of marketplace is user generated content. And so what happens is people will say, oh yeah, I have, um, I don't know, oh, what's a good one? Uh, was it uh, Amazing Spider-Man 300 with all the different variants, right? Um, the, there's so many different versions of it that they're going to name it different things, black cover, gold cover, green cover, whatever, or by creator's last name. So it's very hard algorithmically to actually pull that in with accuracy. Mm. And so then we kind of butt up against what we were talking about before. How do you pull in variants with an accurate um, accuracy rate that's acceptable, but still good enough to actually be helpful for people, right? Yep. Um, we're still struggling with that. I think everyone is, but we're coming closer to kind of cracking it. And that's like our main priority, obviously, because we okay. are a price guide. <laughs> so and, and there are a lot of variants and a lot of the variants are expensive, right? I mean, if you're, you're talking about some of these really, you know, one in 1000, one in 500, those variants are expensive, which is why people are like, how much is this worth, right? I know how much I paid, but how much is it worth? Because a lot of times people are trying to sell them or they at least just want to know that what they just spent makes sense. So it, it, I think it's great that you guys are focused on that and trying to address it because just variants just in general are a little crazy. Yeah, no, for sure. And again, it comes back to what's it worth, what someone's willing to pay for it. Yep. And one thing that we're really trying to avoid is the pumper and dumpers. You know, there's a lot of people out there who kind of, and that you'll see those price going up and down and stuff like that, but it happens. It's, it's a, it's a free marketplace and that just kind of moves around. Um, but we've noticed trends like for variants, um, what seems to happen of course, is whenever there's a movie announced or an option yep. or something like that, something spikes. And then of course you're looking for the issue that has the least, the smallest print run becomes the most valuable or the artist is the coolest artist and has a great piece of artwork, right? Yep. Um, it's the, and that's the, that's the fun thing about comics is that 
it is it is tricky to really track that down and know what that trend is. And we have that like eyes, you know, God's eye view of like all the data, and we're like. There is no fucking freaking funky pattern here. <laughs> you know, it's like it's, it's, a, it's a family show, bro. But it, uh, it happens. It's cool. It, it happens. happens. It happens. Uh, one of fun. Okay. Um, one one of the other questions oh. is is that this is a, a collection management system to some degree or another. Does the system allow me to take photos of my book, like the front and back, or is the image a default image? Like, how does that work? Great question. Uh, so right now you can't. Um, it's it's kind of our stock image, which is the you know cover image of the of the comic. We are moving to a point with, and again, it, it was, I mean, when you start a company, as you as you probably know in marketing stuff, you have to start off with the MVP, that most viable product, yep. and that is the thing that everyone wants to use, and you you try to prove that the market wants this. Um, that's what we've done with Cover Price. We've now been live for about eight months, so we're still relatively new. We've been in the in cooking for about three years, to be honest. Um, but, you know, from there, we're trying to grow and, and kind of, you know, get everything right. Um, but yeah, anyway, sorry. And, lost my and, and part of the reason why I asked that question is, is um, from like an insurance standpoint, hmm. being able to, to have a repository of what the book actually looks like, especially if it's not a graded book where, where it has a serial number, being able to show the condition of the book, how much I pay for the book, as well as the current value of the book is extremely valuable. And so that's just, you know, I, I think that like anything, you have to do what's in the best interest of the company to keep the company going and then prioritize all the suggestions, right? Like I just gave you one, somebody else was just asking a question of whether you can scan barcodes to improve uptake, whether you're connected to the CGC database, et cetera, et cetera. My guess to many of those questions is no, not yet, but possibly in the future, if we can continue to grow with membership, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I, I will say definitely in the future, we've, um, We've doubled down on cover cover price being a successful business. So for us, we're not going to stop until we're poor and, and can't do it anymore, right? It's it's going to be, and even then, it's we're going to leave it up, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, you know, every single feature has a cost associated with it, unfortunately, and so we have to prioritize. What I would like to see, like the vision for that, is that your our collection management system rivals anything that's that else that's out there. We allow you to do prof. We want you to be able to let you calculate your profit, your loss, track your shipping, your sales, uh, and upload your own pictures because eventually we'd love to be able to let you trade with somebody else. Imagine, Ooh. imagine like this Ooh. is this is the world, right? Here's the crazy like marketplace. Ooh. Imagine this, if you will. Um, you know, cover price, you put your entire collection into cover price and you have your wish list. Imagine if we could, with your permission, let somebody else see your wish list and say, hey, I have this. Why don't you buy it here? You know, there's there's so many opportunities. We're we're not even close to to, to there yet, but eventually, there's it's a perfect way to allow peer to peer trading or sales without any high kind of um, you know sales price or percentage or anything like that. Like allowing a, a really organic marketplace with with actual collectors. But if you build it, if you build that, for example, people don't come, right? Yep. So. Um, for us, our, our main focus, of course, is price guide and collection management, but there are so many different things that we want to build into the system to allow the comic book community to really come together. And But I think it. what's wonderful is that you have a vision, and I think that that's important, right? You have, a, yeah. you have your foundational business that you are trying to cultivate and grow while keeping your eye on what are the other things that we can do to enhance what it is you know, and build upon what it is that we've done, which I think is wonderful. So let me address a couple of questions here. Sure. Uh, CBCS actually does get some love. Uh, I think that one of the complaints against those guys is, is just the fact that their turnaround time is a little too long, but I, I don't think that people really have much to say against CBCS. I think they're a very reputable company. Uh, Gino, uh, CGC still has its pre-screening service. That service is still available. They were on the channel just yesterday and confirmed, in fact, that that is still available to people. So hopefully, um, hopefully that helps just a little bit. Mm. Um, John, did you see any questions that kind of rolled through that you want to address before we move into our last and final section here? A lot of great questions. Um, I think we've covered most of them, but uh, let's see. If anyone's typing right now, we're paying attention right now. <laughs> <laughs> Type in all caps because that goes a long way to helping us actually see. Uh, now everything is going to be in caps. No. Yeah, probably. <laughs> screaming at us. So one um, one question I will ask you while we're waiting for people to drop some comments in here is, um, how, is, is the process for pulling in your data 
seems like it would be easier for graded comics versus raw comics. Do you guys do anything different for the raw comics? Um, because the grading is a little bit more subjective for uh, a raw comic versus a graded comic. Can you talk a little bit about, about that? So it's interesting because, again, it's, a, it's an accuracy question. When people put a, a raw comic for sale, they're going to, human nature, I think, well, it depends. There's, there's, there's certain things in the market that affect it. But if you're trying to sell something, you're going to say, my car is in great condition, excellent condition. And you get to it, and you're like, it's got scratches on it. Nope, nope. Or if the person doesn't know how to grade a car or a comic, for example, um, they won't do it accurately. So for us to start putting a condition to a raw, makes a lot of assumptions on our part about the actual condition of that comic, right? Yep. Um, we've been exploring, you, you start seeing the statistical like kind of bell-shaped curve of certain type of prices. And you can start saying, well, everything in this standard deviation is basically a, a excellent condition, you know, uh, mint, you know, fair, all this stuff. Um, so we, I mean, it, it's really tough to actually, I think, uh, group that information correctly. However, one thing that we've learned from listening to our, our customers is that people want to be able to grade their comics in their collection. And that makes perfect sense. Something that was a kind of a blind side to us. We were like, oh, duh, that makes perfect sense. So that's something we're gonna be adding. Um, and with that, we will be able to say, wait, if they say that their comic is this much and we will look at ways to authenticate the, the accuracy of that person, like if they're a collector with 10,000 books, we know they kind of know what they're talking about and they know how to grade a book. Um, then we could actually start finding ways to map that effectively. But that's again in the future. Right now, it's um, a bucket of monthly sales for raw and um, highest to lowest. You know, Got but it. we want to get we want that to be more accurate. Got it. Uh, Gino was asking questions here about some add-on features about uh, being able to print some labels for sticking on comics. Um, not sure if you can even address that one. Sure. Uh, <laughs> Connor has a question here around whether shipping costs are factored into the sales data uh, when you when you do the the actual sales data and also the FMVs. Does is that the price for the book? Is shipping included in there or stripped out? Great question. Um, we, we've had this question before. Uh, that I think that's a very common question for a speculator who's you know constantly shipping. Um, right now, the prices are it's all baked in. Shipping price and stuff like that is baked in. Again, it's because we don't have necessarily the visibility of what how they're shipping it, what that cost is necessarily, um, and we can't necessarily pull that data. So that could inflate or deflate a price of a comic by you know a few bucks here and there. Um, so it's really hard for us to do that accurately. So right now, a short answer is that um, whatever the sales price is, what the person pays for it, that's the price that cover price represents. Some people would say that that's a better price because it's 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 a total price for the book. Um, and so I've I've heard arguments where people are like, you have to include the shipping cost to have the true total cost for the book. And then others will make the argument that shipping is ir irrelevant to the book itself. And so you could you could hear arguments on both sides. There, there's a lot of perspectives in the comic community about like every single aspect of first appearance versus cameo versus, you know, just everything. I, I just had this conversation with my co-founder, Matt. Um, and yeah, he was saying kind of the same thing that, you know, shipping costs and, and, and supply cost is just on the seller. So you, you we just roll it in because that's just kind of doing the price of doing business, you know? Yep. Uh, there's a question here from Roger B around whether he can share his collection to facilitate trades with other users. I think you answered that one, but let's, let's, uh, let's address it one more time to be really clear on like current functionality versus future functionality. Yeah. Currently you cannot, uh, right now your collection is private and it's, it's your thing. In the future, with your permission, we'll never, ever, ever tell anything anybody what you have without your permission because you might have a million dollar comic book and we don't want people to know where you live kind of thing, right? Um, so what we're gonna do is we'll let you share or create a list of things that you want, a group of things that you want to be able to share with and that will become like a, like a profile page within cover price that you can then look at people's stuff and see their hauls, see all that stuff. That's all coming eventually. Very good. Uh, Chino Comics and Morris asking a question whether if, if he submits more books, does he get some kind of discount like a store? And, and I think the answer is probably no to that, but I want you to kind of answer that one because maybe you appreciate that question a little bit better than I. Does, does he mean submit comics like adding them to his collection or submitting them to our missing comic? Uh, yeah, yeah um, I was hoping you could help me answer that yeah, one. Yeah, so um, at this point, um, 
no <laughs> yeah. um not because we wouldn't want to like we you know we love the comic community we were doing giveaways monthly and we're trying to get to weekly we're doing so much stuff to to give to the community um so it's difficult for us to kind of start doing the one-offs and stuff like that we we our price tiers and stuff we think are pretty good uh and we are coming out with that new one that's going to be a little bit lower so hopefully that kind of fits into it hopefully that answers your question Yep. And if not, I'm sure he'll post up another comment better explaining uh, or articulating. It's just a little bit different. Uh, One of the big questions that always comes up with, with pricing services and pricing pricing guides, and Connor is asking the question here, whether you have the ability to import and or export data into uh, cover price. So right now we're built, like literally as we're speaking, I have a, a coder someplace now, uh, building this right now. In the basement? Um, in the basement. <laughs> they don't get fed until the code gets done. Um, you know, they're probably playing video games, to be honest. Um, we're creating something called a, a batch upload where, so what we're trying to do is right now we've tried to build a system to let you add as quickly as possible. Of course, when you have a thousand books, you're going to get, you know, carpal tunnel trying to click these things and get them in there. It's, it's insane, no matter what. So the next step for us is this batch upload, where if you have a CSV file, like if you export something to a spreadsheet, you can upload that. That's what we're currently building. Right now, it's at about 60 to 70% accuracy. So we may do a beta of that and get that out sooner than try to get more accuracy. Uh, and the next stage of that, of course, is being able to export to the same thing. The thing I hate more than anything is when a company tries to hold your collection hostage um by only letting you import but not export you should if we want to be better a better company you should have the uh, ability to leave and make us so right with your money so for us of course we're going to build an exporting functionality um again it's just we have a list of things we're, we're working on and it's on the list It'll, we'll get to it hopefully soon there we go i think that's a wonderful answer uh one more time can you run us through as we're kind of wrapping this thing up can you run us through the current and then also the future uh levels of membership with actual pricing for people. Sure. Okay. So if you go to coverprice.com, C-O-V-R-P-R-I-C-E.com, um, currently you only have the free version, which is um, free uh, with limitations and the paid version for $8.95 a month. You could also from there do an annual version, uh, pay up front for a year, and it comes out to about $6.95 a month. Um, what we're building right now is the ability to have an unlimited access to the price guide uh, and that's going to be three ninety five a month, and it'll give you more access to content and things like that. Is so, those it, are the what is the price. ETA on the three ninety nine option for people that uh, find that to be attractive? What is the ETA for when that will be available? So the wait, so that should be done in about a month, maybe a month and a half. Um, we have to test it, and make sure it's all hooked up correctly. Um, but that's being built starting next week, and. Um, the best thing to do if you're interested in that and you don't want to commit, sign up for the free the, uh, the free trial and we'll put you on the mailing list for not only uh, the free trial, but also our newsletter. And as soon as um, that new one comes out, you'll start seeing that uh, regularly because we're going to do a lot of you know promotions for that as well. Yep. And, the, and the, um, the free gives you 14 days access unlimited to everything that the site has to offer, which is essentially reminiscent of the $8.99 price that you would pay if you went for the full version. Yeah? Yeah. 100%. Okay. And then just to be clear, because I've, I've seen a couple of people ask this question in the chat. Um, you only price right now comics, raw and slabbed comics, and that's it. Yes. Is there yeah. any plan in the future to do pops or Funko pops, uh, sports cards, Marvel cards, any of that other kind of stuff, toys? Is there plans for that? Comics are enough, people. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> what are you asking for? No, um, actually, we, we do see cover price as a platform that can be expanded to um, any type of collectible. Each one has their own niche kind of worlds that we have to dive into. We know comic books better than anything right now, so that's what we're, we're working on. Um, once the platform is actually um, completed, our vision, and this is a far or further, <laughs> farther <laughs> vision, is to be able to have comic collection, um, trading card collection, uh, manga collection, and have the exact same system allow you to look through all your different types of collectibles. Um, so yeah, definitely that's on the roadmap in the future, but that's a big ask. Um, and it's it's still, we have to basically prove that cover price for comics will work before we can actually build the platform and extend it out. But yep. by the time we get to that, we're gonna be talking about like machine learning kind of technology of adding stuff and looking at trends. Uh, image recognition. So by the time we start getting that stuff, the collection, the price guide system will be 
effing spot on. See, Pe I people are, you're learning. Well I'm done. Learning, people are always learning. asking me, Reggie, what else do you collect besides comics? And I'm like, isn't that enough? <laughs> <laughs> you collect right. trophies and the gains. <laughs> oh, brother, not not anymore. Back in the day, back in the day, not anymore. That second kid ruined that uh, that hobby of mine known as bodybuilding. Uh, I am very thankful for her. She just turned two not that long ago. Absolutely love my daughter. Well, then so, you're getting a cardio. <laughs> yeah, brother, chasing her around. Uh, a lot of l less sleep because her new thing is waking up at now like five o'clock in the morning. She likes to wake up really early because she can now get out of her bed. So it's a, it's a nightmare for everybody. <laughs> So we, we have discussed a lot over the course of this conversation, and I want to definitely thank you for spending some time with us. Is is there anything that we missed? And, and I know the site has a lot, right? But if you had to pick one or two things that maybe we missed or that need to be better highlighted, what would those things be? I would say we talked about um, having a really good collection management system. We talked about uh, having a great price guide. That looks at var uh, variants and has over 650,000 different issues in the, in this, in the database. Uh, we talked about how it's a smart collection because now everything in your collection, we're watching and letting you access every single data point and quickly get in and see what's trending, what's hot. So that's kind of like the core. Um, the things that we didn't talk about is that every new release every week um, is on the site. You can add it to your wish list and carry that into your shops with you. Um, we have a marketplace on the site that currently goes to My Comic Shop and eBay. So if you're looking for something, you can hit the buy button and go into that and access that way. We're going to be building that out. Um, what we're going to do in the very near future is add more content. Um, we're starting off with the newsletter, which has been great, getting great response. We do a week in review. So, um, if you sign up for cover price uh, free trial, that'll add you to the newsletter. And um, each week we put something out that literally goes into the movie options, the why was this hot this week, and based on the data, not just speculation, but data and reasoning for why that's happening. The mm, right? Actual yeah. data. That's okay. what we're trying. Ooh, I love the numbers. I love the numbers. Come on. So, uh, yeah, so, so one so, one thing that you touched on there. Um, no, I'm sorry. I cut you off. Go ahead. Keep keep going. I'm sorry. Oh, no worries. Um, and so from, from there, we're actually looking at additional content. We're looking at additional um, ways to inform the collector community, not just the speculator, but the collectors of like, like I was saying, we're coming out with a variant article that's going to be like 30 pages long. And literally, Matt, I think, almost killed himself because it took him months to write this thing and research this thing. <laughs> um, and he's, he's fantastic. Um, if you're reading the newsletter, that's, that's Matt. Um, uh, and he's just fantastic. Um, we're coming out with a bunch more content. We're coming out with ways to interact with our community more. And we're always, always, always improving our database and our pricing algorithms. Very good. It, it, there, there are other services out there for uh, pricing comics. When you think about your service offering, what are maybe the one or two things that differentiate you from other services. And, and that this is not to criticize other services, but it, it's to help people draw distinctions when they are looking to spend their hard earned money. And they're like, I could go here or I could go there. What are some things that, that would motivate people to choose coverprice.com? No, that's a great question. And, and same thing, like, you know, we love the business side of stuff, but we would never put anybody down. We, I think competition makes the marketplace good. And like I said, if, if they do something better, we're going to quickly catch up and do it as better, if not even better. If I'm going to say better 10 more times. I got you, brother. Uh, <laughs> thanks. Um, so what separates us, like what makes us better at this point in time, right, is um, right now we're pulling in as much data daily. It's updated based only on real sales data. There's no speculation. We're not going to put an algorithm together that says, oh, like if, if you come to our price guide and there's no sales data for the last couple of years, which I should say our, our range is years um, in the past, right? If there's no sales data, we're not going to tell you anything. You're going to have to look at the, the graded value below it and make an estimate for yourself because we think it's irresponsible to say that the market's going to value a 10 at this price or a 9.6 at this price when we have no frame of reference. Um, so, so for us, it's like, this is the data. You do it, do with it what you will. So that's one separation. We're not making any type of stuff up. Number two, in terms of the layout, the design, the experience of coming to the site and enjoying your collection, um, that's something that a lot of people have come out to us and said, wow, you know, everyone else is stuck in the 1990s. You guys have blown it out of the water. Um, and again, that's just from my background as a, as a UX designer for years, for decades. Decades. I'm not that old. <laughs> um, you know, that's what really makes us, uh, you know, I think better. Uh, and of course, number three, we're hungry. 
You know, yeah. we're a startup. We are listening to our our uh, members. We want to get better. We want everyone to come and, and become the ultimate resource for every comic collector. And we're not going to stop until we do. So that's kind of our vision. And like, hopefully those are enough reasons to, to come and give us a try. I, I think that those reasons that you just cited, couple with all the other things that you've said over the course of, of this conversation, <laughs> I, I think uh, add up to make a compelling argument for people to consider cover price. I think that there are several people in the, the room here that have said they're going to definitely check it out. Some have said that they're going to sign up. I, th I think that that's all wonderful. At the end of the day, this channel is all about trying to provide people with information and insight so that they yeah. can make informed decisions for themselves, right? Because we are not saying do this thing blindly. We are saying, here's some information. You decide what you want to do. So. Amen. hundred percent. All right. So uh, give us, give us a quick wrap up. Where can people go to find more information about you guys? Give us the URLs, give us the social media channels, give us the screen names. Where can people go to get more information if they have questions? Cool. So if you have any questions, uh, you're going to go to coverprice.com, C-O-V-R price.com. So there's no E. If you put an E in there, you're going to go to some sort of insurance company. <laughs> Don't go there. Um, we're on uh, Instagram. We post and pull a lot of our daily shakers and movers and hot comics and make posts about them every week. So there's constantly information on our Instagram feed um, at Cover Price, uh, our Facebook channel, and of course on Twitter. Very good. I think we have a little bit of a lack here, but we are going to persevere nevertheless. John, I want to thank you for spending a little bit of time with us. I think that this was a very uh, helpful conversation to have. I, I know that everybody's super busy, but I want to thank you for taking time out to come onto the channel to share some information with people. I think it goes a long way to making us all smarter about what's available to us as collectors, as as readers, however you want to class as speculators, however you want to classify it. Um, I, I definitely appreciate you taking some time out to talk with me behind the scenes and then to be on the channel live sharing some information about coverprice.com. No, my pleasure. And thank you for, for you and your fans and everyone who's uh, contributing because um, yeah, we, we love this stuff and it's so fun to talk about. I we could probably keep going. <laughs> probably. <laughs> but you have um, a two-year-old, so let's... <laughs> I do have a two-year-old, and I also have a wife that is waiting for me outside oh, yeah. of this room for us to spend a little bit of time together now that the kids <laughs> are in bed. So with that, guys, yeah. if you haven't already uh, subscribed to the channel, I definitely want to encourage you to do so so that you can stay abreast of all the content that I release on a weekly basis. We're going to be doing our live show uh, this coming Sunday at 7.30 called Ready, Set, Go. This is my preview show where I basically tell you guys what's coming out for from the channel for the coming week. But I'm also going to be giving away live on the channel a, a, a slab from our sponsor. I'm going to be giving this thing away this week. It is Batman Dam. So tune in so that you can actually find out whether you are the winner of Batman Damned. And then I'll also be previewing the book that I'm going to be giving away next week. Uh, again, John, I want to thank you for spending some time with us. I want to thank everyone that has joined the chat. I want to give a huge shout out to everyone that gave super chats. I definitely appreciate you guys. And certainly if you need to reach out to me, feel free to do so. ReggieCollects at gmail.com and ReggieCollects on Instagram. Thank you very much and enjoy. Enjoy the weekend ahead.